Hey guys, it's Kathleen, and today I'm going to be giving you five reasons why you should read the wonderful Saints and Misfits by S.K. Ali. Saints and Misfits is a story about a 15-year-old girl named Jana who feels slightly out of place in every aspect of her life. Her mom is the only divorced mother that goes to their mosque, and as well, her father has remarried somebody and is no longer a practicing Muslim. She has a crush on a boy who is not a Muslim at all, and as well, she has people in her life who question why she wears the hijab. All in all, Jana feels like she doesn't fit in anywhere completely, and as well, she's dealing with the fact that there is a boy at her mosque who is regarded as a complete saint by everybody, but a few months ago, he had tried to sexually assault her, and she's the only one who was aware of this and has never told anybody, and he is the monster that is haunting her throughout the novel. I can't even describe to you how much I love this book. It was a 5 out of 5 star read for me. I didn't expect it to turn out that way, honestly. I thought I was going to like it, but I didn't have the highest expectations going in, and I was completely blown away. I thought it was amazing. So without further ado, here are five reasons why I think you should absolutely pick this book up. First of all, the obvious reason is that this book is an own voices novel written by a Muslim author, and that is super, super exciting. I'd never completed a book that was about a Muslim girl and had been written by a Muslim author. I think the closest I'd gotten was the book Does My Head Look Big In This? I forget who wrote that, but I remember I got a couple chapters into that and I didn't finish it, but this is such a great novel. SKOE clearly knows so, so much about Muslim culture and has lived it, and she really, really puts all that into the book. You get such a sense of what it's like to be Muslim in today's world and, and what it's like to be a young Muslim girl, especially going to a secular school where most of the other students aren't Muslim. I loved, loved learning about her faith and I loved learning about the different cultural aspects of Muslim culture that I had no clue about. So I think that is absolutely a reason to pick it up if just for that reason you should get this book. The second reason you should read this book is one that I think is kind of rare in YA and that is that it takes religion seriously. I had never read a YA book before this one with a religious main character, and I didn't realize until I read this how much I'd been craving that. I am not Muslim, I would never try to claim that Jana's story is my own, I'm actually a Christian, but at the same time, it meant so much to me to have a book where religion wasn't a joke, where it wasn't just a side character, the main character incorporated faith into her daily life. It was a real, vibrant part of what she did, it was who she was as a person, and that really mattered. It was so wonderful to read about a character like that. I'm so happy that this book was written that way. It also incorporates other faiths as well. Jana is friends with a man who is Hindu and it takes that faith very seriously as well. It mentions a couple other Christian characters and everyone's beliefs are totally respected and understood. I learned so much about the Muslim faith through this book and I'm so happy I did. There was so much to learn and there were so many interesting things. I think a lack of religion in YA to be honest is something that is really disappointing. Honestly, I think that there is so much to learn from different religions and I think there's so much we could include and we could incorporate and I'm really happy this book hopefully will start a trend to do that. I'm glad this book did it and I want to see it more. So yes, I'm so happy this book had a religious main character and her religion was taken seriously and shown as part of her daily life. The third reason you should read this book is because it gives such an honest, incredibly important portrayal of sexual assault and what it means to be a survivor and what it means to blame victims. I was so happy with how this book took on the topic of sexual assault. First of all, I really liked that it wasn't just some weird guy in the streets who sexually assaulted her. It was somebody she knew. It was actually the cousin of her friend. He goes to her mosque. She sees him every single week and that is so true with many cases of sexual assault. Oftentimes it's someone you know very well, someone you might have seen all the time. They could even be a friend and someone that you admired or considered a good person. Second of all, Jonna does not move on from the issue easily. It definitely haunts her throughout the novel and I think they really, really showed that well. And while doing that, a we really, really take sexual assault seriously in this novel. Overall, I just think this book portrays sexual assault in a very honest way. I think it's a really important story for that reason. It also really, really gave you an idea of how common this is and how often somebody who you might think is a good person could be someone who could commit something like this. So I thought it was so well done. I loved it. I loved it, loved it, loved it. I thought it was so good. And it really is a big part of this novel. It's almost at the heart of it to some extent, and I thought it was great. So if you really want to read an honest depiction of sexual assault, then definitely pick this up. On the other hand, it does briefly describe the scene where Jonna is sexually assaulted, so if that's something that triggers you, maybe stay away from this book because I know that's a concern for a lot of people. So if it is for you, then maybe that book isn't for you, but I did think it was really well done and I really enjoyed it. Reason number four you should read this book is because it provides a look at different cultures, but it never reduces any of the characters to stereotypes or archetypes, and I thought that was really great. 
As mentioned before, there's a Hindu character, there's various Christian characters, there's characters who are just living not particularly holy lives, and nobody is judged, nobody is presented as if they're terrible or anything. There's all sorts of different cultures in this novel, and there's never any stereotyping, which I thought was so good. Everyone is taken seriously for what they are, and everyone is considered to be equal and valid, and I loved that. I thought it was so great, so for that reason, definitely, definitely pick up this book. And then finally, reason number five you should pick up Saints and Misfits is the characters. I loved every single character in this book, other than the ones I was not supposed to love. I did not like them. But I really, really loved the main character. I loved her family. I thought that the sibling relationships in this book were so good. I love reading about sibling relationships because I have three siblings and whenever siblings fight and they go through stuff then I'm like, yes, that is my life. I totally get it. So I loved reading that in this book. I really, really like the relationship she has with her best friend who is not Muslim and how they accept each other's cultures and they're willing to learn about each other's cultures. I thought that was so great and I thought it was so important to have a relationship in this book between a non-Muslim and a Muslim character. Loved it. I also love Jonna's character development. There's a character in this book called Saint Sarah. Her real name's just Sarah, but she's basically this perfect Muslim girl who Jonna regards as almost overly holy. She runs a lot of the programs at their mosque for youth, and she's so, so keen and excited about everything. She's just a little much. And we all know someone like that in their lives, and I thought that was such a cool character. But at the beginning, Jonna calls her Saint Sarah and she's not super fond of her, but Sarah starts dating her brother. And over time, Jonna really starts to see her in a new light and they really develop a friendship. So I thought that was really well done too. I love the diversity of the characters in this novel. There were so many different kinds of people. There's this super, super adorable character named Nua. I thought he was adorable. I loved him. He was great. He was such a fun, cool guy. And I think he's such a neat, fun addition to this novel. He had a sense of humor, but wasn't too serious. I really liked that. There's also a really, really really wonderful relationship between Jonna and this man named Mr. Rom who she takes care of every once in a while after school. He's an older man and it's a really, really sweet relationship there. He and Jonna talk about literature. By the way, Jonna is a huge fan of Flannery O'Connor. She's such a nerd. I love it. She's such a great character. I loved everything about this book and I love the characters especially. They were really important to me. I grew very attached to them and it really packs an emotional punch once you get towards the end and you realize what's going to happen. I loved it. I thought it was so wonderful so I hope you guys love them too. So those are five reasons that I hope you pick up The Wonderful Saints and Misfits by SKLE. I really really want this book to get more attention and hype. I'm going to insert a little picture of the actual cover but it is such a good book. I really really hope it gets a lot more attention and love. I absolutely adored it. I just flew through this book. I almost cried towards the end. It was so amazing. I loved everything about it. So I hope you guys love it too. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe on your way out. If you would like to follow me on any of my social medias, the links will all be in the description. But in the meantime, I will see you guys next time. Bye!